The people of Goose Green in the Falklands have been commemorating the 30th anniversary of the battle which liberated them from Argentine occupation in 1982. From there, Charlotte Cross reports. They gathered, sheltering each other from the bitter winter wind, determined to pay their respects to those who died here. Old soldiers from Two Para, veterans of the conflict who've known this ground as a battlefield, stood alongside serving parachute regiment soldiers. They prayed and they laid wreaths, remembering the intense fighting waged here 30 years ago. The battles for Darwin Hill and Goose Green cost two para 17 lives, including that of their commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel H. Jones. 30 years ago, the names of the dead were called out as they were buried in a shared grave. Today, those same names were called out again. After the ceremony, everyone moved down to the settlement at Goose Green, where to this day, reminders of the Argentine prisoners of war can still be seen. It was only after the Battle of Goose Green and the Argentine surrender that the Paras realised they'd taken on 1,400 well-dug-in Argentines with just 600 men. But it was the community hall that was the scene of liberation for the locals. In 1982, this community hall served as a prison for the residents here. They were rounded up and held here by the Argentines for 29 days before being eventually liberated by two para. The Argentines gave no warning residents were going to be locked up and they arrived in just the clothes they stood up in. We got a knock on the door and um, they said, I want you and your family to go to the church, as in the community hall, as we're here, um, for a meeting. So it was quick get your clothes on we've got to get up to the, to the hall and see what's happening so everyone in the settlement um, arrived up here and the door was shut pretty much and that was it we were here and that's where we remained for 29 days this photo taken at the time shows the cramped living conditions inside the hall 30 years on the residents are recording on paper where they all slept it was very very packed yeah um, my, my particular bed was uh, just in the bar there, underneath the bar, which was a little bit better because it had some carpet on the floor. So The very first day um, we were in here, we had bar snacks, what was left behind the bar, you know, um, I sh had to share a Mars bar with my brother and a can of Fanta, so it was sort of spread out during the day because we didn't know how long we were going to be in here for. When the final battle for Goose Green began, they knew liberation was close. As the battle started to get closer, things got quite fraught and tense, you know, because we didn't know what was going to happen, whether, you know, a shell could have came in here and killed everybody, you know, so, um, yeah, things were a little tense. Uh, we had holes in the floor, which um, you might see in, in the building here, and um, the last night of the battle, we were uh, actually underneath the floor most of the night. Constantly hearing the, the gun going over, go between the buildings and, and the, and the you know, the explosions and stuff going off from up where the main battle was, up on the gorse line. So, yeah, we heard a lot. While some people took shelter to escape the shelling, others watched the battle. You've seen people getting shot 100 yards or so away from you. You've seen people, people getting blown away and things like that. It, it's not pretty. And it's, it's still on my mind. Still is 30 years on. The people of Goose Green presented visiting two para veterans with a scroll, a mark of their continued thanks. In return, the veterans presented Goose Green with a Union Jack, the same flag they brought with them 30 years ago, saying it belonged here and this is where it will stay, a permanent reminder of liberation. Charlotte Cross, Forces News, Goose Green.